Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you everything I have learned in the past 12 years, relocating all over the world with my household good in my car. This is loading a container, shipping it to another country, passing customs, offloading, and starting living again. So guys, everything I have learned, I'm going to put in there, but it's also valid not only for containers, it would work also for pallet, barrels, or whatever that you need to ship. If it's less than a container load, it's still fine but I'm gonna use container because this is normally what I use. Okay, so there are three types of container, a 20 footer, a 40 footer, a 40 footer high cube. Now I always use the high cube for the simple reason that the cost of an high cube is no more than a regular 40 footer and it contains about 12 to 15 percent more space now if you look at the traverse cost and the size of the container if you look at a 20 footer it's 33 square meters and the traverse cost is about 2600 we're talking literally half around the world let's say us to china china to us or something like that that would be more or less the cost or france to i don't know philippines or something the cost about 2600 dollars for a 20 footer 33 cubic meters if you look at a 40 feet or an iCube, it's gonna be the exact same price. It's gonna be about $3,004 to $4,000 depending. But if you look at the size, 67 cubic meters for the 40 footer and 76 cubic meter for the high cube. So that's why I always use a high cube. The extra one foot, so the container instead of being eight foot tall, it's gonna be nine, nine and a half depending. This is very, very good, honestly. J it saves you a little bit if you have to put something on top of your car for example you need to build a mezzanine on top of your car the high cube is gonna be very good for that let's take a pause for a second smash the like button give me the thumbs up whatever you want to do and subscribe to the channel and let's continue before you start before you even call a company to get quotes Take those four points, mark them down and think about it before you call a company to move or before you move your goods and your car to another country, okay? First, the status. What are you? Are you a diplomat that will have full tax free and they will never be able to check what's inside your container so you can bring whatever under the sun without anybody checking? Are you a retiree returning home? Are you a worker that's gonna move to another country and then you're gonna have to pay taxes on everything you bring? Or you're a citizen returning? So citizen returning likely will not pay taxes, but it depends, maybe you have a maximum, it depends on the country. Some countries have no maximum, some countries have some maximums. So some countries, uh, you would have to be outside of your country for more than five years. There's a lot of permutation here. You need to check this out because otherwise you will get back to your country and pay massive amount of tax on your goods. Know the export and import laws very well, okay? For every single item. For example, if you move to Vietnam, you cannot bring books into Vietnam. They will have to be read. You will have to pay the price for every book you're gonna bring in for them to check it out to see if there's any subversive material in them. Very difficult. If you move to Qatar, you cannot bring any alcohol. If you do, it's gonna be seized, you'll be fine. There's a lot of things that you have to consider before you export out of your country and import into the new country. Know your laws very, very well. Ask your shipper check online you need to know and with 200 countries it's almost 200 different sets of rules number three total value of your goods for insurance purposes and the taxes as well because if you have for example a container insured at a half a million dollars does it make sense that you declare ten thousand worth in value for taxes it doesn't right so you're gonna have to be consistent with that then Port delay and potential issues, know them because some countries have a lot of problems. Like right now, for example, Lebanon. Uh, when we came into Lebanon in 2013, there was a lot of issues with the government that's still not, issue, not resolved, actually it's worse now. So basically we had almost two months and a half of delays at the port. I'll tell you how to mitigate that, but you know, you may incur that kind of trouble. So you need to know as well. Same thing for your car. Know what kind of car you can bring and the rules and the laws about the car. And I'll have a full video on importing a car because to be honest with you, the car stands on its own pretty much. Now that you have those four points dialed down, let's go with the step that you need to do right now. Quotation. Get three quotation from three separate companies. The reason why is because you want to know the evaluation of size. So the CBM, the, cu the cubic meters that you actually have to move. It's kind of ridiculous, but I have some ca companies that came to my house to evaluate and some go with, oh, you have 40 CBM and the other one is at 60 CBM. So how come one has 
more than the other how come they measure differently uh, that can influence the the price that you have also what fits in the container or not the weight and so on and so forth so three quotation is very good ask the quotation also to be full service and partial service why because if you have some friends to help you load the container you could save two thousand dollars if you decide to buy your own supplies and you decide to literally load the container yourself which is what i do all the time because i have basically i keep my boxes from one move to the other I mean, seriously, I save literally five, six thousand dollars every single move doing that. So you want to have a breakdown quotation. How much is going to cost you for every single thing? And we're going to talk about that in the next slide. Partners at destination. Very, very important. You're going to the Philippines, for example. Who will offload your container in the Philippines? Is it some guys down the street that they gather at the port and they decide to just bring them for the day? Is it a company that's secure? Like, for example, we left Switzerland for Philippines. We used Team Allied. It was Team Allied in Switzerland and Team Allied in the Philippines. So it was the same company under the same umbrella. That was very easy and it went smoothly insurance what kind of company are they going to use and also what insurance the company have to move your goods so if they drop your fridge before you even leave your apartment are they going to pay for it do they have an insurance for that and also what kind of insurance they're going to get you to move your container if the container get lost or gets dam get a damage on it or drop or something like that what kind of insurance which company are they using is it a reputable company is it going to be a fight to the death to pay you or they're just going to make you a check for the content that you have and say sorry let's find that out this is important the staff do they have permanent staff that work for them full time or when they need they go and hire some people to be honest with you this is a huge one because sometimes like when we moved out of lebanon to go to new york it was a big issue for us because they hired some syrian off the port they damage a lot of things these are not movers these are just people that have never worked together that don't know each other the guy just drove his minivan at the port and picked up a bunch of syrian refugees and told them okay let's go today uh, we're going to give you x amount of money to move some guy okay this is very very dangerous you have to make sure that the staff is permanent that the staff know each other and they work well together and they're insured under the umbrella of the company storage it's very good if the company at destination has storage because if you have any issues and you cannot import your goods it'd be amazing if you could just take them out of the container put them in storage instead of having to pay the mirage fee every single day which is about a hundred dollars this is very expensive you have to let the container go as fast as possible normally you have seven days and then the container has to be shipped back so you need to empty the container fast if they have storage for that that saves you some money for sure now the method what are you gonna do are they gonna bring small little trucks put your stuff in trucks and bring it to the port to load a container do they bring the container right in front of your house how many man manipulation will they have do they use use a crane do they do that manually do they have dollies uh, do they have security to make sure that you know your boxes don't go missing these are the type of things you need to ask how they're going to do the move for you the overall cost so the shipping cost okay so when you have your quotation what are you looking for where can you save and how much does it cost normally for me I pay half price. Instead of paying 15,000 for a full complete move, I pay about 7,005. And trust me, embassy, UN, military, US army, the all the rates for how much money the army is giving the staff when they move is listed online there's no secret so trust me when you go and you say i'm a colonel in the army they know exactly how much you're going to receive and they'll make their quotation based on that you cannot accept that quotation you're going to have to either lie about your status or you're going to have to ask them the price based on actual numbers not on what they're expecting you to receive because you may just pocket the rest of the money that's what we do every single time we move packing supplies this is normally the quotation that I get for, like I said, half of a world move. Okay, if, of course, if I were moving from, let's say, Canada to, you know, Montreal to New York, that wouldn't be the same amount for a, you know, a small little move like that than I would have if I had to move from, let's say, China all the way to, I don't know, Israel, for example. So this is more or less the amount. So packing supply is about $850. That may vary as well. When we left Jamaica, it cost us nearly $2,000 in packing supplies because everything in the island cost a fortune, okay? When we left New York, it cost us about $400 because I ordered everything on Amazon and it was super cheap. 
packing. If you pack by yourself, also this price will vary because if you leave Philippines, packing might cost you $500 because those people will charge you very little because they get very little. If you leave France, well, that packing might cost you a lot because French are making a lot of money. They work only six hours a day. Uh, you know, they make about $40 an hour. So this is a big difference in somebody making $10 a day. So about 2005 for that. Loading. Loading is about $1,200. It actually cost us more in New York because, of course, it's New York. People make more money. And in Jamaica, it cost us a fortune because we, need to, we needed to have dogs. We needed to have checked and security and gamma rays and all kinds of things. It's very crazy leaving Jamaica because of the drugs. So they want to make sure that everything is safe. So they charge you way more money for everything. The Traverse, again, depending on the container, about $3,000, 3000 4000 This is common. Uh, a 40 footer 40 hc to cross that's fine the brokerage when you arrive at destination or when you leave your country you'll need to export and import that's about 475 500 is the average the trucking bringing the container from the port to your house from your house to the port both places both locations about 300 it's about 75 dollars to 100 dollars depending where you are in the world uh, for a container just to move it from your house to the port Offloading is about the same price as loading. Now you can skip on this and we do skip on that a lot as well uh, because honestly we either hire locals or it depends on the country we are. Uh, but you understand this, if it's a 40 footer, you have three hours to offload before you start incurring fees, which is about $100 an hour. Unpacking. Unpacking can cost you as much as $2,500, pretty much the same as packing. Honestly, I have never used unpacking because I don't think people know where I want to have my stuff. So I unpack, I put the things in the cupboards where I want to have them. I don't ask people to do that for me. They, I just take my time to do it. That's not a problem. And generally, they would remove, uh, you know, the, the blankets and stuff like that and keep them. Ask if you're moving a lot keep them, they're yours. I recommend that you don't let them take your stuff. Now, there might be extra fees like drug detection, gamma ray scans, uh, extra security that might be needed or permit or something like that, and export and import taxes. This is something that you may have to face depending on the status and the country you're moving into or out of. Selecting a company, what I normally look for? Well, obviously a fair price, okay? If the price is ridiculously high or ridiculously low, I might dismiss the company just based on that. Number two, are the partners professional? Don't forget that even if you have a company, like we use DSV once, which is a company from Denmark, which is recognized around the world, but in some countries, they are terrible, okay? And that was the case when we moved to the Middle East. Uh, from Europe, they were great. They did a great job when they arrived in the Middle East. They could barely do the job and it was terrible dealing with them. So it does not necessarily mean that because it's a big company that in every country, their subsidiaries, the company they use are professional. You have to be careful who the partners are at both end. Try to take a company that has international partners. So that way you're sure that if there's any issues, they're not dealing with a third party and put the blame on the third party for not doing their job or stealing your stuff. And then if you can check online, if they have good reviews, best business bureaus and other things like that, you want to make sure these guys are good. They're transporting everything you own. All right. Insurance. Now this I'm completely thinking differently than most people I know, okay, to be honest. And trust me, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I'm not thinking like most people because I do math with my insurance. Let me talk to you first of all about the three classes of insurance and then you can understand better my point. Class A insurance. This is full insurance. This is they come to your house. They will force you to use them for packing for sure, which will cost you $3,000 or more because they want to make sure that it's packed properly. They will also force you to pay somebody to literally take your stuff and unpack because if you use class A, it's a full insurance. So if they break a glass, they break a vase, they will pay you or replace it. So they want to make sure that you're not the one responsible for having breaking it. So this costs you way more, more in the sense that you're going to have to pay more to move. And also the insurance is more expensive. It's about 4.5%. Now, if it's a hundred thousand, that's 4,005. That covers everything. No matter what breaks, they pay. Class B, this is limited damage. 
Class B is about 3%, okay, so it's cheaper. It's like Class A, except the difference is they will pay only if it's a damage, like the truck has an accident, the container gets dropped, uh, or there's a problem of the sort, okay? Not if one box gets dropped. If there's some damage inside your container, if it's not proven that it was an accident, like like again, the container gets dropped, there's a car, there's a road accident, or they bang the container or something like that, they will not pay. Class C. Class C is total loss only. Meaning if the container is stolen, if the container is thrown overboard during a storm or they don't know where the container is, yes, this is when they're gonna pay you your full amount. So if you insure for $100,000, it might cost you 1% or 1.5% and they'll give you that 100,000 if the container is never found again. That's fine. But if there's any damage during the transport, if they smash everything, if the container turned upside down, okay, or there's a car accident or whatever, and the container flip, they will not pay you anything because the container is still there. Okay, it's either or. It's total loss or nothing. Let me explain to you why I'm always using class C here by giving you the numbers. So class A, we say, 4,500, but don't forget that you have to add the fact that they will pack your stuff and unpack your stuff. So that's another $4,000 minimum, okay? But just barely the price of the insurance is 4,500. In a class C, it's gonna cost me about 1,500 or $1,000, depending on how much, you know, where I'm going and the insurance, the price varies, the percentage varies where you're going, okay? So if you go in a war zone, might be 10%, okay? If you're going to the United States or Canada, might be 1% or 0.75. Now, the difference is $3,000 between the two. I have to incur inside my container $3,000 worth of damage before I actually start making money. So basically my deductible is like $3,000. And again, if they're, they're packing and unpacking, now it's becoming $7,000. So even if they smash my fridge, even if they smash my Eurocav wine cellar, which costs 3,000 euro, it doesn't matter, okay? I, they still will not manage to get me to spend as much to replace what they've broken than the difference the insurance would have cost. So that's why I always use Class C because I assume that they will never give me more than $3,000 worth of damage. And to be frank, we generally have about $500 worth of damage every move. And it's not because we are bad at packing, it's because international shipment, the, the container gets moved a lot, people move it you know, here and there and both countries, and it's you always have things that break. Not badly, but you know, some. But never to the degree, in my case, that it exceeds $3,000, even $1,000, it never happened. Avoid using pallets. Okay, this is major, because the thing is called vermifuge, basically, essentially, uh, they may, if you use wood, which is not part of furniture, if it's a furniture, like an Ikea furniture, it doesn't count, but if it's raw wood, they may request that you vermifuge the container, meaning that they're gonna put some spray in it to kill bacteria and stuff like that, kill mold or kill any kind of insect. If you use pallet, 100% sure they will force you to do that. So that's why I don't use pallet. Also, pallets sounds ridiculous, but they are taking space in your container. So you will lose about five to 7% of your overall space because of the pallets. So I never use them. Okay, here's the general rule of thumb for free import of goods in most country when you are an individual importing your things when you're moving to a country. There are three major points that generally, if you can fall into one of those categories, you will not pay anything in tax when you come in your country. Okay, if you're an expat returning. So I have lived outside Canada for years. I'm returning to Canada with stuff I've acquired abroad. If I have left for more than a year, I will not pay anything on taxes. I'm a returning Canadian. Now, the second one, if you live or if you move to, let's say, Canada, US, Mexico, Hong Kong, uh, Japan, every country in Europe, actually even Switzerland, so Schengen, uh, Iceland as well, Norway is same, Australia, New Zealand, all these countries have that same rule that if you have left the country or you have lived in the country you are in for more than a year and whatever you're bringing in the country is six months old and above, so if you bought anything six months before your move, then you will not pay any taxes, okay? So this allows people to move every year to another country without paying any taxes at all. Of course, the six months, 
okay, generally, I don't know, as a diplomat, they never bother me, but, you know, if you have invoices, generally, they won't care, okay, they'll, they'll assume you, li you live in the country, it's your household good, there should, shouldn't be any problem, but that's basically the overall rule, and obviously, diplomatic shipment under diplomatic immunity, no taxes. So this is pretty much the basic on how to move a container with your car and household good around the world when you relocate. And I'm going to make individual videos for each of those aspects in time. If you have any questions, post them in the description below and I'll be happy to reply to you. Take care, guys. See you on the next video.